Hello and welcome again to a series of presentation about various aspects of health. In this series, we're going to talk about the skin manifestation of diabetes. And I want you to understand that uh, skin manifestation is very important. And in the first series of slides, I want to talk to you about a condition called necrobiosis diabeticorum. This is a condition when small vessels along the shin or the anterior bone of the leg get damaged. As a result of ischemia, there is lots of changes that occurs in the skin. This often can precede diabetes, it can happen during diabetes, and it can be a profound complication of diabetes. Often this condition can be misdiagnosed because people don't realize what it is and can be thought to be an infection, but really it may precede diabetes by a number of years as well. When appropriately treated, this condition responds very well, people can do well. But if not, this can progress and lead to major consequences. So necrobiosis is a not uncommon complication of diabetes and a skin manifestation. The next series of slides I want to talk to you about acanthosis nigricans. This is a pigmentary changes and you have to understand that in diabetes, it's not just a disease of blood sugar. It's a very complex disease. And the increased amount of insulin now stimulates the pigmentary cells to produce more pigment. As a result, you get brown pigmentary changes along the neck, which is very common, often will precede diabetes by a number of years. But this is a very good warning sign. And so if you have a family member, if you have friends who have these changes in the neck, it's important to go to your friendly doctor and get him to check it out. Because rubbing the neck, scarling it with all kinds of things is not going to go away. This is something that happens with type 2 diabetes and insulin resistance. Often, this may not only be confined to the back of the neck and the front of the neck, but it can be in the armpits, it can be below the breast, it can be around the belly button, it can be around the groin. This does not cause major problems, but it certainly is a good thing that if you see this, then you need to be checked out for insulin resistance and early stages of diabetes. Another aspect that has evolved and we've become fairly comfortable understanding it, though it is evolving very rapidly and we are trying to understand it, is polycystic ovarian syndrome. Polycystic ovarian syndrome is a condition where cysts develop in the ovary. As a result, the egg that is supposed to come out of the ovary every month at the time of ovulation does not come out. When the egg doesn't come out, it gets cocooned into a cyst in the ovary. And over time, a garland kind of a neck, uh, necklace forms around in the ovary with multiple pockets of cysts. This starts producing the male hormone testosterone. So instead of producing the estrogen and progesterone, which typically is produced in the ovary, now these same ovaries are producing testosterone. What is going to happen? Now we get a male look to the person. So the female patient will look like a male. On top, things like hirsutism, increase in hair. The hair will start growing along the face and the mustache. And these young girls are absolutely frightened. They don't know what is going on. Why are they developing so much hair on their face, so much hair on their body, so much hair in their arms and legs? And I have numerous young patients who shave their legs twice a week. And in fact, go to the waxing parlors, to the laser clinic, and then eventually they end up finally going to a diabetologist who will say, it's all because of insulin resistance. You have the early stages of diabetes. Hand in hand with this thing, what happens is a condition called acne or pimples. And these pimples can have a profound effect on a young girl and can be disfiguring and can lead to long-standing changes on the face in a young girl. And she's frightened and she goes to a dermatologist who will give her antibiotics and anti-acne cream or lotions or, anti uh, or medicines, but this doesn't go away with these things unless 
insulin resistance is fixed, this is not going to get better. On top of this, because of this polycystic ovarian syndrome, these young will, girls will start having abnormalities in their menstrual cycle. Now, being young, it's a frightening experience to have menstrual cycle, but on top, the irregularity, they'll have a, a menstrual cycle in a week, two weeks, three weeks, it becomes very erratic, it can be very heavy, it can be profoundly painful, and so it has a very debilitating effect on these young girls who are frightened, scared, they're afraid to talk to anybody, and they don't know what's going on with their bodies. So now they have hair, they have pimples, they have irregular menstrual period, and they'll go to a gynecologist who can regulate the menstrual cycle. But again, if the insulin resistance is not fixed, this is not going to go away. What happens over time? The eggs that are supposed to come out at menstrual cycle so that the girl can get pregnant, she cannot get pregnant. She is a fertile. She cannot have children. As a result, the young couple, when she is married, there's a lot of confusion. There's a blame game that's going on, that there's something wrong with the girl. But really, it isn't. It's because of the insulin resistance that is playing a havoc in her life. And when we fix this insulin resistance, then all these things can be uh, fixed again. So what I want to share with you that there are numerous aspects of diabetes. It isn't just sugar anymore. And I hope that we, this series of presentation, we are able to educate you. We are able to empower you. We are make, make, making you comfortable understanding this. And we, our main hope is that this provides you hope, hope for a better tomorrow. And good things can happen. And you can do well. Thank you, and God bless.